Welcome back, Map 20-3. Today, we are starting our new chapter, Chapter 7.1, Making a Budget. Uh, basically, one thing that you guys need to understand after graduating high school, and we already fortunately finished the financial unit with interest, investment, loan, those kind of things. Personal budget can be more significant because you don't want to owe money just in order to go to a grocery store at one point. And you don't want to overspend and be on a debt, those kind of things. So budget play a huge role. So the very first chapter, uh, sorry, section of this chapter, 7.1, talk about budget. And I'm going to uh, divide this, se uh, this section into two different lesson videos. Uh, first thing first, what is the budget? Some of you guys may wonder. So let's start with that. Budget. Um, basically, when people talk about budget, it is a balanced statement uh, of income and expenses. So it's both positive and negative. As you may notice, I put positive for income and negative for expenses because expenses is basically what you spend money for. It can be grocery shopping and those kind of things, or it can be some kind of expense for travel, hobby, those kind of things. And when it comes to income, those are most of the time it's a regular payment. Uh, some contractor job have irregular income. Because it's always done by uh, contract by contract, or if you're a seller, it is different too. However, income is generally regular. However, know the fact that it may not be uh, regular all the time, depends on the circumstance. Like for example, COVID-19, a lot of, visit, a lot of uh, restaurants closed or temporarily closed. Like a laundry shop or uh, any type of tailor place, something like that. So you need to understand those. And when it comes to expenses, this is more what I want to emphasize at one point. Minimize expenses is actually quite significant in budget. So I want to talk about one uh, type of expenses, which is known as recurring expenses that's basically expense on regular basis and if I give some of the example that can be electric bill or it can be grocery can be something else like gas bill etc etc can be any of those some kind of expense that you can predict at one point so we're gonna do one of the example and that example will be done on a blank pieces of paper of course it is located on page 330. All right. Janice had the following income and expenses. During the past month, identify the income and expenses, classify the income as regular or variable, and expenses as recurring variable or recurring or variable expense or unexpected expense. So we are going to categorize Let's go through each of the column. Paycheck. That's under the income column. Paycheck. And that is $500. And when it comes to next paycheck, it's right underneath the new boots. That's also $500. Yeah. 
below birthday gift, car loan payment, new hard hat, uh, for work, eating out. Those are oh, sorry, birthday gift from grandparents. So that's you who receiving. That is a hundred dollar. And I believe that's everything involving income. Now, first thing first, we need to categorize. When it comes to categorization, you need to understand that we need to find out if it's regular income or it's a variable income. If you think about paycheck 500, 500, seems like that person is receiving bi weekly, um, although the date is not specifically given we can predict that 500 is repeated so you can conclude that this is actually a regular income why because i can predict the amount maybe timing of when i receive it too birthday gift this is not a regular it's a once in a life once in a once in a year too not once in a lifetime sorry that it's pretty sad once in a year. Um, so $100, this is more variable income. Why? It's because it's not regular. These two are not equal together in terms of its definition. You can predict when or how much you receive. So I'm going to put it as variable income just because it's irregular. Not only amount, but also time too. That is my income. Although the question does not ask everything, if you add everything in here, 500, 500, 100, so when it comes to net income, that is a thousand hundred dollar. That's basically what we have. Well, in this case, Janice monthly income. Now let's look at our negative part, which is expenses. Is there any type of expenses that is occurring? The first one was gas bill. I think it's a car gas bill, $34.86. And you have a cell phone bill, which is about uh, 42.89 cent and Janice purchased new boots which was uh, 189.54 that's the uh, biggest expense so far uh, we also have car loan payment which was uh, its biggest value 270 oops 5.00 and when it comes to other part new hard hat for work that was 29.95 uh, generally some company provide those for you or you can reimburse but we're not talking that detail and eating out 2578 so there is no grocery shopping but in any case uh, let's figuring out let's figure out what we pay regularly if you look at it cell phone bill car loan payment these two payments we can categorize those two as recurring expenses Because we can predict how much for the next month or we know at least that those bills will come. It's not something new. So that's what I want to point that out. Variable expenses should be gas bill, boots, and eating out. I can categorize these three as my variable expenses 
because I know that it's irregular payment but we can pre we are not surprised let's put it that way it's something that is at least predictable at one point we can eat out anytime at one point maybe boots I don't know Janice in this example where there's a regular boots purchaser or I don't know the one thing that I will put as unexpected can be this hard hat because first of all it's out of unexpected expense I like to say it's something that you don't predict to buy often unless you're a collector which I really doubt and it's kind of funny but in any case you do not predict those kind of purchase in a regular basis so have that in your mind that's something that I want to point it out to you now let's do one more example I want you to go to example number two on page what is this uh, 332 Carlos has made a list of his income and expenses for one month and there's two income semi-monthly per paycheck and then expenses there's rent food entertainment utility transportation clothing cell phone bill and miscellaneous that's something that we may buy uh, in an irregular basis not a regular basis irregular basis the first question he plans to put any extra income into saving account how much money does he have to put into saving so uh, where is it I need to go back and forth um, he plans to put any extra income into savings account how much okay in order to find out extra money left over we need to do some calculation we need to find net income and subtract it with net expenses so we got to do that first let's do net income first if you think about net income he has two which is 539.92 multiplied by two because you receive twice for that amount so prepare your calculator 539.92 multiplied by two becomes a thousand seventy nine dollar eighty four cent that is a net income on the other hand um, net expenses you cannot do the multiplication you better list everything at one point sadly I have to find a rent 445 plus 195 for food grocery and everything entertainment 79.85 it can be gym sports whatever utility 45 15 and the list goes on transportation 75 maybe a bus he's taking in something else or a gas bill clothing 72.95 cell phone bill 47.95 miscellaneous which is 25.00 and we are going to add every single thing I'm punching the number in so you have 985.9 and that means 90 so now we have net income net expenses we can subtract them then you have 93.94 as a leftover and that is the amount that Carlos can put in his saving account maximally 
put into his saving account savings account there you go that's what you can do using the table that is given by the question now B is asking how much money can Carlos save over the course of one year so let's think about this this is $93.94 per month and as you may know we have 12 month in a year so just simply multiply by 12 then in that case 1127.28 is how much per year that he can save so and assuming that he doesn't take any other money out of that account now C what percentage of his income do Carlos saving represent so basically now we are comparing our saving versus our total income as a percentage so here's what you need to do income is of course larger amount of money so in that case saving money savings money which is 93.94 goes as a numerator and income which is my 539.92 cent uh oops it's per month sorry so times by two or you can just directly put 1079.84 which i'm gonna rewrite over here 93.94 over 1079.84 and then you can multiply by 100% to estimate how much percentage uh, can the savings account money compared to uh, exist compared to the income so 93.94 divided by 1079.84 then if you multiply by 100 it is about 8 point seven percent it's actually eight point six nine nine blah 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 like what you will see in here but have it in your mind we are rounding up to nearest tenth or hundreds depends on what it is and now last question D is asking uh, what does D ask? Carlos hopes to buy a new computer in one year. He expects it will be caught it will cost thousand five hundred. How much more would he need to save per month to be able to afford it? Suggest so one way he could do. So let's do monthly instead of yearly. A thousand five hundred, let's just divide it by twelve. then you know that Carlos have to save that much of amount per month and if you realistically look at your nine uh, above example saving account can have about 93.94 so if you actually compare 125 minus 93.94 she need to save additional 31 dollar and six cent from his account at least raise of 31.06 in carlos's uh, savings account And honestly, suggesting that can be a little bit easy because what was his biggest non-essential state? Let's see. Um, so I need to go all the way from the top. Rent, you cannot do anything. So that's check. That is already good. Food, maybe you can squeeze some out from food. Maybe you can do some reduction for this spend. Or entertainment you can for example spend less or unsubscribe some of those channels in the TV that you don't watch a lot something like that you cannot squeeze that much out of utility unless it's, it's actually debatable 
Like for example, if it's summertime, you can maybe turn off the ventilation system, something like that. Or transportation, maybe walk more. If it's walkable distance at one point, it's debatable. Um, clothing, maybe you can squeeze some money in. Like we should not buy too much of clothes every month, as you may notice. And I'm perfect example. <laughs> I should buy more clothes. Cell phone bill nowadays is, this is very depends because, uh, for example, did you purchase the whole device at the beginning or are you breaking into like two year term, something like that? Miscellaneous, you can actually squeeze some money out of that too. Except even if you squeeze everything, $31 something, it's not that effective, but anyway. So you can squeeze some money. My idea of squeezing more money <coughs> for Carlos in an effective way is food and entertainment. You can, for example, don't be a foodie. Don't have to eat outside all the time. During the lunch time, maybe you can prepare breakfast and lunch. Mm -hmm. Make it a little bigger so that you can have, um, yeah, save some money, something like that. So that is today's lesson. Your to-do list basically is page three, uh, ba, 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 ba. page 300, I'm going to write down in here, homework, page 331 to 332, you need to do one and three. And when it comes to the next section, I want you to give it a shot for and this time number four and six. So these four questions is your homework. And today that's today's lesson.